Welcome to Get Cooking in Cloud, where we share the best recipes to apply in your cloud kitchen. I am Priyanka, and in today's episode, we'll share the recipe to plan for data recovery when production environment is on-premise or on another cloud. Main Street Style is an e-commerce company that has their production environment set up on-premise. Imagine if they were to discover that they have lost all the recent customer orders during a disaster. It would be a huge loss for their business if orders are not fulfilled. Since data is the critical piece of their application, let's dive deeper into it and help Main Street Style with some strategies to avoid losing data during a disaster. The term data covers two scenarios, data backup and database backups. Backing up data alone involves copying a discrete amount of data from one place to another to recover from corruption or when production is down. Database backups, on the other hand, are slightly more complex because they typically involve recovering to a point in time. Hence, we need to not just consider backing up the database, but also consider backing up the transaction logs and then applying them back to the database during recovery. Now that we have the basic understanding of data and database backups for DR, let's consider Main Street style scenario and how they can set up DR specifically for data. For data backup and recovery, there are a few options. They can create a scheduled task that runs a script or an application to transfer the data to cloud storage. Or they can automate a backup process to cloud storage using GSUtil command line or by using one of the cloud storage client libraries. The other option for data recovery is to use a third party solution. Main Street Style uses the most common tiered storage pattern where they have the most recent backups on faster storage and slowly migrate the older backups to a cheaper storage. When they use Google Cloud as the target, they can use Cloud Storage Nearline or Coreline as the equivalence of the slower tier. One way to do this is to use a partner gateway between on-premise storage and cloud storage. Partner solutions manage the transfer from an on-premise network-attached storage appliance or a storage area network. Now that we've learned about data storage and recovery, let's consider database backup and recovery. Main Street Style can use a number of strategies to implement a process to recover a database system from on-premise to Google Cloud. Let's look at two of the most common solutions. They could do a backup and recovery using a recovery server on Google Cloud, or they could use a standby server on Google Cloud for application. In the recovery server approach, they would create a database backup using the built-in backup mechanism of the database management system. This will typically create the backup to a local disk. Then they would create a cloud storage bucket as the target for the data backup in Google Cloud. Copy the backup files to Google Cloud Storage using GSUtil or a partner gateway solution that we looked at earlier. Also, because this is a database, they would have to copy the transaction logs to the recovery site on Google Cloud. Having a backup of the transaction logs helps keep the RPO values small. Then they would configure connectivity to Google Cloud using Interconnect and VPN. Create a custom image of the database server on Google Cloud with exactly the same configurations as the one on-premise. Now, when time comes to recover the database to the DR site on Google Cloud, it's easy for Main Street Style. They would start a minimally sized instance from the custom image and attach any persistent disks needed. Set the auto-delete flag to no auto-delete so that the persistent disk will not be inadvertently deleted, since that could be a disaster. Then apply the latest backup file and transaction logs that we copied to cloud storage. Replace the minimal instance with a larger instance that's capable of accepting production traffic. And finally, switch the clients to point to the recovered database in Google Cloud. When a production environment on-premise is up and running, they would just have to reverse the steps. Take a backup of the database and transaction logs running on Google Cloud. Copy these backup files to the production environment and apply them to the production database system. Prevent clients from connecting to the database system in Google Cloud by stopping the database service. From this point, the application will be unavailable until they finish restoring the production environment. And finally, redirect the client connections to the production environment, and that's it. An alternative recipe is to set up a standby server on Google Cloud for replication, which 
helps achieve very small RTO and RPO values since it actually replicates data and database state in real time to a hot standby of the database server. If Main Street Style was to set up a standby server, then here's how they would do it. They would first have to connect their on-premise network to the Google Cloud network, then create a custom image of their database server on Google Cloud in the same configuration as the one on-premise. Start an instance from the custom image and attach any persistent disks that are needed with the auto-delete flag set to false. Then configure replication between the on-premise database server and the target database server in Google Cloud. The clients are configured in normal operation to point to the database server on-premise. After configuring this replication topology, they would have to switch clients to point to the standby server running in Google Cloud Network. When production database on-premise is up and running, they just resynchronize the production database server with the Google Cloud database server and then switch clients to point back to the production environment. Now, in our case, Main Street Style has production set up on-premises. But if they had the production set up in AWS, they can use the storage transfer service to transfer objects from Amazon S3 to cloud storage. They could set up a transfer job to schedule periodic synchronizations from data source to the sync with advanced filters based on file creation date, file name filters, and the times of the day you prefer to import data. Or they can also use tools like Apache Airflow to move data between clouds. Well, there you have it. If you have a production application on premise or in another cloud and need to set up the data recovery, then hopefully you've learned some strategies to do that. That's all for today on Get Cooking in Cloud. Here's hoping you're whipping up your own DR strategy. Join us next time where we will share more recipes to implement DR for data. If you would like to see more such content, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.